All right, Coach Schumann here with the Success for Life podcast. This is our kickoff uh, of of season four. Obviously, I I, I do a bunch of um, shows all the time on my other podcast for fo- of football, and uh, um, but this this is our business based podcast, and and it's it's year four. It's pretty cool to be able to do that. It's grown so much tre- tremendously, and. Uh, I have to say, I'm, I I used to like have to beg people to come on job back in the day, but now 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 I'm like, okay, I want the right guys uh, on the podcast because otherwise, you know, you're not getting what you need. But it, it's it's pretty funny that um, you know you get to that point and and you know a little bit about how it is. But um, I, I want to introduce John. John, we call we call him the Samurai of Sales, uh, and and he he really is the guy that. Um, could teach you how to not just uh, develop your sales organization and how to bring in big sales, but cold calling, which is one of the scariest things for a lot of people, happens to be an expertise of him. So he must be a little bit of a glutton for punishment, which is which is good, uh, which is what makes him such a great success. Um, John, John, tell everybody a little bit about your background and and you know wh- how you got to this point. Yeah, well, that's a that's a great question. Thanks for having me as well, David. I love what you're doing, and I, I especially see time and time again the correlation between sports people on, uh, and entrepreneurs or business people and, and martial arts or business people and athletes. It, it, it kind of comes up in time and time again. So I like how you kind of discuss and talk about both of those topics. But yeah, myself, I was a, a military guy many many years ago. I, I, well, I served a few years in the British Army. Uh, didn't really work out, came out, did the usual stint of homelessness, turned to drugs, tr- truck driving, uh, bouncer, you know what I mean? Nightclub bouncer, security, that kind of thing, festivals. And I never really kind of wanted to do any of those. They were just kind of things that I fell into, which a lot of military people tend to do when they leave. And what I decided to do, I thought, right, my life isn't really on track at the moment. What What's going on? I've, I've been homeless. I've been like turned to drugs and things aren't going too well. So I, I sort of gave my head a wobble, if you want to put it that way, moved to a different part of the country, managed to find an opportunity to, to learn martial arts and become a karate instructor. Now, it wasn't because I was particularly interested in karate. It was just the fact that there was a, an opportunity to be a, a, a sensei. You got, you got to learn to be an instructor uh as part of a job and i thought well that sounds right up my street it'll give me a little bit of discipline back get me fit again uh that kind of thing like like i'm lacking since i left the military so it seemed like a good idea and that's what i did but part of the the sort of training was to go door to door so that's where the cold kite calling started so i was learning the karate, getting the best for me for free i was training with like a fifth down or fifth degree whatever you want to call it and i was learning all the karate skills but at the set uh, so during the day i was doing the karate training four five six times a week and then on the evenings i was knocking the doors and signing them up for the classes so i very quickly i did it for five years i got my black belt in the five years and I, but i was also knocking doors for that long so i was very quickly got to building rapport with people. I could I could build rapport with people in the first 10 or 15 seconds after a bit. I knew whether I was going to get a, an appointment in just that, that time, time frame. And I could go from a cold call to a close in, in the space of a few hours. So I could, I could speak to someone, say, right, I'm from your local karate club. Is there anybody in the house that might want to do some self-defense? Yeah, I've got a seven-year-old kid. Excellent. Little, little Tommy, has he done anything like that before? No, no, he's not. Well, what about family class? You could all do it together. I'll, I'll pop around and have a chat about 7 o'clock all right for you, 7.30? 7.30, okay, brilliant. Will little Tommy still be up then? So I'd book the appointment for the, the next few hours' time, go back, boom, and sign him up. So a cold call to close. But then after that, many years later, I was still uh, I was kind of, well, should I say, I, once I got the black belt, I realised it wasn't a, a career path. I couldn't make money from it enough. There, was, there wasn't enough pit retention in the classes. The numbers were up and down. I couldn't cover the cost of the halls. So once I achieved my black belt, which was the driving force behind me pers- persevering, I-, I didn't want to get to purple belt or brown belt and then throw the towel in. You know what I mean? I had to get that, the black belt was the, the goal. So I managed to get the black belt, but it didn't work out. So it, the beauty is it, it gave me the foundations of my sales career, though, because I got some serious skills and like following up and rapport building and every, everything that, that you need as a, as a sales p- a professional. 
uh, I'd sort of got just through sort of studying people like Brian Tracy and, and affirmations and positive self-talk and all that kind of thing. You need all that. If you're knocking door after door in the pissing down rain, I mean, I'm in England, so it was torrential rain every day. So I was getting blasted with rain, doors slammed in my face. You need that positive mental attitude to, to keep going. So that's kind of where it started. But then once I, I'd done that for many years, I did affiliate marketing, so lead generation, that kind of thing. I did uh, high ticket closing, so closing high ticket four or five K deals on the phone as well. So I've done pretty much a, a, what do you call a rounded salesperson. Yeah, so that's that's interesting. You you touched on a bunch of things right there. I want to try to unpack uh, a quite a, quite a few of them. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, first off, uh, uh, really really interesting background. I, I I I you know I'm big believer of that. Your mindset, like, and it happens to me every single day. When I'm ready to go, my mind's in the right frame. I'm gonna have a good day, you know. And uh, yeah, when yeah. I'm when I'm thinking about other bunch of other things and I'm distracted and my my mind frame's not in the right direction, it's probably not going to be a, a, a good day from and so and then trying to change your mindset out of uh, if, if you're struggling mm -hmm. during the day, trying to shift your mindset is important thing. So I, that part I'm a, 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 a huge believer. I'm probably going to do a, a whole show just on that. Um, but what I yeah. think is, is is so amazing. So you, you know that that door to door sales experience and one of the things I found. Um, that a lot of the people that I've spoken with that have had great success beyond in their business, a lot of them started with the door to door sales and getting things slammed in their face. And, and, and the, the obviously cold call, you're, you're not getting a door slammed in your face anymore, but now, you know, you, you'll have people that aren't interested in, in, in your product. Tell me about some of the like learning tools you gain. And, and I'll talk about Brian Trace because I think, you know, obviously his stuff's amazing. Um, but some of the, the, the tools that you gain from going door to door and then transition, obviously, you know, into cold calling that that people can take with them. How, how did you how did you handle the, the the negative interactions, the door slam in your face and stay focused uh, on the prize? What, what kept you focused on right. the prize? Um, you know, along the way. And the same thing obviously goes into to cold calling. Just you're not getting the door, you're getting, you're getting the, the phone hung up on you. H how, how do you keep that 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 mind frame and, and keep closing um, and having that, that right thought process? Right. Well, there's a couple of things that you kind of, I can cover for you there because you, you kind of uh, touched on a couple of different areas. And so one, sure. I would say there is no difference between cold calling on the phones and cold calling door to door. It's exact. I just have the exact same pitch in my head. So say, for example, I'm planning an evening on the doors, right? I'll say right tonight, I'm going to, I'm going to plan out these streets. I'm going to knock these two streets. And that's a hundred, that's, that's 50 doors. I'm going to knock tonight. Out of those 50 doors, I'm going to knock. I'm probably only going to get 30 people answer them doors. 20 people won't just answer the door. So your number, it's about numbers. Uh, and then out of them 20 people, I want to get at least five appointments. That's, so that's what that's what my goal is. Five appointments, I might get uh, three or two sales, and, and I want to get three three new members. So that, that, that you have the numbers in your head. If it, if it was phones, if it was on the phones, I'd say, right, I'm going to ring 50 people today. Out of those 50 people, only 30 people are going to answer the phone. Out of those, uh, I, I might get, uh, or um, they, they might go through to answer machine or hang up. So, again, it's the, the numbers are the same and, the, and the, the process is the same. So, whether you call calling on the phones or whether you're knocking the doors, it's exactly the same process. Uh, the, the way I, I overcome the, um, the negativity is if somebody hangs up a phone on me, don't pick another fo a, a phone again straight away and ring another number because I'm going to be aggro because somebody's just treating me like a, a tosser. Do you know what I mean? Someone's just been a, an arsehole, haven't they? Right. So I'm not going to go straight. So what, that's when I, I use what I call reset. I don't know whether other people, this is what I do personally. This is my technique. And I just reset. So that means I'll have two minutes, five minutes. I mean, I used to smoke, but I don't do that anymore. So I'd, I, it would have been a fag break, but now it might be a coffee or whatever it is that gets me back in my woosa or a bit of breathing techniques or a few minutes meditating or some, some uh, mellow music or whatever it takes to get me back into that good frame of mind again. And then I will make the next call. Because the thing is with sales, what I found time and time again is 
when you have a really bad shitty call, it tends to be the one straight after that's a good one. Like loads of loads of good ones together or loads of bad ones together, you tend to have a really good one right after a really bad one. It's it's like life, isn't it? So what I used to find when I used to do the doors, when I was doing the doors and I was really pissed off and I was drenched and I couldn't be bothered doing any more. And I just used to think, right, I'm going to do one more door. I've had enough now. I want to go on. My hands are freezing. The numb, the purple. I've had enough of this. I'm going to knock one more door. And it was that last door and I'd get an appointment for four people. And I'd be like, yes. So it's, it's when you want to give up sales or anything in life, when you're just about to give up and you've had enough, you, 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 you're seething. You really had enough. You don't want to do anymore. Just that extra push is what does it. Very interesting. And, and technique wise, um, is there specific things that you use? Like everyone's always familiar with, I guess the most famous is the Wolf of Wall Street, right? Uh, <laughs> his straight li- his straight line system. I've read his book. Um, and and the, those specific tactics that that were keeping people on that conversation are there specific mm. techniques that that you utilize um to help people understand how to really close in sales and how to be able to develop that relationship yeah i mean the beauty of sales is and i've studied all the greats and i've done all the courses i've done the straight line i've done the card on university i've done but the thing is with sales it's, it's such a personal thing it's not something that so you can take somebody's ideas, and I've done it a few times, and I did it in my book. I've taken some of Tom Hopkins, because I like a lot of Tom Hopkins' his work. He's really good. So I've taken a lot of Tom Hopkins' his, his, uh, techniques and strategies, but I've, I've made them my own because you're your own person. So if you want to be a successful salesperson, you have to put your own humor into it, your own personality into it. So you can kind of use other people's ideas and strategies, but you need to make them your own. So that's exactly what I do. I add my own humor into things. I, I, I have my own empathy. Empathy is a big part of it. You've got to put yourself in their position because they might be uh, scared about making a big decision, a life-changing decision, especially if they're forking out 5, 10, 20K. It's a big decision for a lot of people. If, you, if you're doing B2B, and it, you talk to some CEO and he's used to having budgets of five million a month or whatever. It's not going to be any skin off his nose. But if you're speaking to somebody that's using the life savings to invest in a business, that, that's quite a tricky decision for them. So you have to be empath- empathized. You have to empathize with them and put yourself in their position and try and meet them halfway. I mean, I was selling something not so long ago and it was a, it was for an anxiety guy. I was helping him. Uh he was really good at it and it, I would speak to people that had anxiety because he helped them overcome it because he'd been through it himself. So he, was, he was like an anxiety coach. So I spoke to this lady. She was a, she was a mother of eight children. And I said, wow. And, I, and it was like a four or five K program. And I said, are you going to be able to manage this financially? Are you still going to be able to pay your bills? Are you still going to be able to put food on the table? The last thing I want to do is put you in a position where, yeah, you start getting over your anxiety, but you're getting more anxious because you can't pay bills. So that's not going to work. So you have to be empathetic in sales. And I would never try and sell something to somebody who wasn't a perfect fit because it's not a one size fits all. That That's a great point. And I, and I think that, um, when you go to and, and I think Brian Tracy does a good job of, of talking about that um, too. When you try to fit sales into a box and not understand each individual customer, there are principles along with it. Um, but I think we talk about with empathy, you know, like uh, that's that's always been like a big thing with like Gary V when you see his stuff and 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 I think understanding everybody's situation is a key component of sales. And I think today. Where you can get aspect uh, access to so much information online, um, they can get information on you, they can get information on me, the good, the bad, and the mm-hmm. ugly of all of that. And yeah. long before you, you you step into a call to talk to them, so understanding, I think you know who who you are and who they might perceive you to be, and understanding where they come from on that, I think is a is a is a huge aspect. And I think you're, you're dead on when you talk about that because that customization, basically mass customization of sales ha- has um, really been the area where you can, you can, you can grow uh, tremendously. I and mean, that's why I found this helped me in, in scaling 
um, and and doing that fast, you know, what, what do you think about how, how how can people, you know, reach a lot of people at the same time that there's when you're when you have to have empathy, when you have to um, understand your customer, that takes time. So what are things that people can do to develop that and then obviously make the best use of their time so to get the most leads? But what to the best use of their time and and well again that, that's a good question it, it all depends on the system and, and what you're offering doesn't it and, and how, how you how you deal with that I mean some some sort of uh, services are going to be different to others like I said that the guy that I was uh, dealing with with his anxiety that he's gonna have a different approach to his his business as somebody that's b2b so it would all depend on your, your own uh, service or product that you're offering is how you reach these people and, and how long the, the sales process is. Because it's like I've said before, um, I, I could go from cold call to close in, in a very short time. But if that was a 5K, 10K product, it was only because it was a small investment that I could do it so quickly. But it, it, you, your, your sales cycle is going to be that much longer if it's a 5K, 10K, 20K product. If, you, if you're selling 20K plus, 30K high ticket programs, it may take months before you can get get the sales. So it, it you can't rush anything. You've just got to be patient with everybody. Everybody is an individual with, with individual circumstances, aren't they? So you have to. You're a sales professional, so you have to. It's a bit like being a, a therapist or something. Or do you know what I mean? You've got to put yourself in those shoes and and really want to help them. That's the thing. That that's the difference between being a con man and a, and a sales professional is genuinely wanting to help people and, and being pleased with what they've got and, and checking back in with them. What I say as well is people are always going on about following up with people that haven't bought yet. But what about following people that have bought? Nobody ever talks about that. Finding out how they're, how they're getting on with the product in six months' time, whether they're happy with the purchase. Everybody talks about following up with the people that haven't bought yet, but what's wrong with following up that people have already that are already your customers? That's a great point. And I, and I think people are always trying to get the new customer and then forget mm -hmm. about things with the, with the old customer and things that you could, you could reach out and, and retain and give. Um, what do you think about like, uh, uh, I, and I don't know if you ever use any of these things like lead in. So, you know, obviously like as far as on the internet, squeeze pages are a big thing within sales, right. And, mm -hmm. and developing yeah. squeeze pages. How do you integrate the technology of generating those leads with the follow-up? And so I, I guess it's a two-fold uh, yeah. question. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. 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 I'll, I'll start, start with that. Yeah, it's a good question. What you've got to remember that the the, the actual initial process that from the marketing side to actually getting the, the warm leads, that's different to the following up process. So once you get the warm leads, they take, we, we, we use what's a C, called a CRM. You may have heard of that. Mm -hmm. So the CRM is like a, an organizer of, of your leads and, and you can actually find out which ones are customers, which ones are bought, which ones haven't bought, which ones you need to follow up with. You can you can check whether you need to follow up with them in a, month, in a week's time or in a two months time or whatever it is. But with the follow up process, what I do is you've got to follow up You've got to be savvy with the follow-up process. You don't want to be badgering because that's what new sales people tend to do because they're hungry for this money, aren't they? They want these commissions, so they're like, <laughs> "I need to. I'll follow up with you tomorrow or, or next week." And then they'll follow up some more. Follow, follow, follow. So that's that's like stalking, isn't it? That's more like badgering somebody rather than being a professional that follows up correctly. So, if for whatever reason I'm on the phone, so I'm closing a five k, six k package now, and and uh, with Julie, and Julie's like, well. I'm definitely looking to move forward with this, but I'm, I, I need to move some money around and, and get, get organized. It's probably going to take me till Friday weekend. Okay, perfect, Julie. Right, this is important. Right, so Julie, Friday's going to be good for you. How about two uh, two o'clock in the afternoon or three o'clock would be better for you? So you're not letting her take charge of the conversation. You're still in control. So by you giving her two options, you're still in charge of that phone call, if that makes sense. So she'll say, all right, well, three o'clock would probably be better. Perfect. Right, I'll put you in for three o'clock. I'll send you a Zoom invite or whatever you're doing. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give you a call on WhatsApp or whatever the, whatever the process or the, however you're uh, having that conversation. So make sure you book them in and follow up at that time. It's as simple as that. Don't try and follow up any sooner or later. Just negotiate that time. 
call on that time and then if they're ready to move forward perfect if they're not ready again and, and, and you're getting cold feet or something right what i tend to do then is i'd say okay julie are you sure this is ready for you are, are you, are you definitely want to move forward yeah yeah definitely one more so i give them one more or maybe two more attempts in, in a short space time I'd, maybe maybe one so the next time i speak to her she's still not ready i'd say okay julie right i think what we need to do here is give you a bit of breathing space why don't you reach out back to, back out to me when you're ready to move forward because then you just you're not letting it go but you're giving her that breathing space and i've had it when they've when you've kind of forgot about them they've, they've got back to you in like in another two months yeah let's do it do you know what i mean so just treat them like human beings and not not just a dinner ticket or, or <laughs> an extra an extra chunk in your in your pay package. I mean, they're, they're just right. people, aren't they? But you need to treat them that way. I, I think that's a a really good component. And I think that gets lost on a lot of people that do sales. That uh, you can't you can't jam it down their throats that they're going to buy it because no. then they get remorse, right? So even if they do mm. buy, you're you're going to get you're going to get remorse, and you're going to have a hard time living up to. Uh, uh, living up to what they expect because they didn't have quote unquote, maybe the, either the money at the time or the will to do it at the time. And by doing that, I think that's a really interesting technique. I think it allows them to justify in their mind and work the things through. And then when you follow up with mm -hmm. them again, after some time period, they may have worked that through and at somewhere along the line, they've already shown they've had the interest it's just getting them to the right to, to the right mind frame. I, I, that's really interesting. I think that that uh, I think that's lost on a, a a lot of sales folks because they're worried about making their numbers. They're worried about you know what I got to get done yeah. at the end of the month, and um, I, and I think they they forget about that. Um, what what do you? So one of the things that I found, and and I always take advantage of this when I, when I get calls on it. And I know that my customers take advantage of it when I send stuff out in the, in the programs that I run. The end of the month, uh, most salespeople have some sort of quota. Now, if they own their own business, that's different, right? You have kind of a different thing if you own your own business. Um, so you know where your numbers are. But, but as a person working in sales, they have some level of quota. <clears throat> How important do you think those end of the month um, deals that they run and utilizing that as a part of their closing strategy. Is that a good, is that a good thing or is that, does that hurt in the long run? I, I'm always curious on that because once you start to discount, right, just to close the sale mm -hmm. that month, there's positives and negatives. You're getting the money now, but is there a negative to that? Yeah. I mean, I've not, I don't know a lot of experience with that myself personally, but I mean, I, like you just said, there are some positive and negative because people are going to give themselves added pressure, aren't they? And when you start to give yourself pressure, sales is a, is a high pressure game anyway, especially if you're, when you're on commission only. So I, I only ever deal with commission now. I don't, I don't want a basic because the thing is, Brian Tracy used to say this as well. If you've got a basic, you've got a blanket, you've got a safety net, so you're not going to be hungry. Like Les, Les Brown always says, he's hungry. And as you mentioned before, I was listening to Les Brown the other day, and he was a door knock, door knocker as well, which I didn't know that until the other day. So he was, listening. yeah. So anyway, um, so you've got to be you've got to be hungry, but you're not going to be desperate either. So you've got to get. It's all about mindset, but you, there's so many different factors. So the moment you get hungry for sales, you're not going to get any. It's like that cycle. You don't don't ever be hungry as long as you think. I'm going to help as many people as I can this month. You will have a much better uh, result than if you think I'm going to sell 50 people this month. <laughs> right. Does that make sense? So <laughs> yeah. If you genuinely help people, then that will work. But if you are, if you are, I've got to sell 50 people, because nobody likes to be sold. You've probably heard this a thousand times. Nobody likes to be sold. Everybody likes to buy. So when you're speaking to somebody, you need to, Paint the pitch for them and how, how how marvelous it is and how brilliant it's going to be for them and let them let them come to the decision themselves. That that's one of the, the tricks and the keys of, of of closing is getting them to believe that they've come up they've they've made the decision themselves without you pushing them because once you start to push, they're going to start retreating. That I've seen this myself because we, we when when the, it's quite a tricky stage when you're getting getting quite close to the finish line and you're just trying to edge that deal. 
sometimes if you push too hard, it, they'll, they'll fall over or they'll, back, they'll, they'll crumble and then you've lost it. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll go, I'll tell you what, if you need a little bit more time, let's just back this off and, and we'll just we'll just we'll just uh, c come back to this next week. I know I know you've already said that this is what you need, and we can we can always leave. Really, oh no, let's do it. Let, let's. I, 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 do you know what I mean? So sometimes if you say we'll leave it a bit, they'll actually go on oh, and snap snap on you. What do you need? My card details, and they'll they'll just go for it. So again, it's like a game of tennis. So you've got to you've got to re keep returning and get that rally going rather than trying to dominate. Right, keep that volley going. That that's exactly, that, that's yeah. keep keep the keep the ball keep ball in the air. It keeps going. You you, you have your ch your chance. What what are three things? And and, and I like to kind of do this. Um, three things that so if they read your book or they hire you as a, a sales a sales consultant to help them with the bit. What are three things that they could hope to take away from working with you or reading your book? What you know? What either one. Well, there's there's quite a lot that, that like I said, I can cover different <laughs> areas. But, 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 but if we're only looking at three, three, say, three, one, let's take three. One, one would be one would be overcoming the fear of rejection. So whether that's cold calling, whether that's people hanging up, whether that's people saying no, people don't like to hear no. But that's something that you you need to just suck it up, but a copy it, it happens every day in sales so if you're a coach and you're just getting into the coaching industry you're going to hear a lot of no's it doesn't matter how good a coach you are it, again it's not a one size fits all so one one area i'd say overcoming the fear of rejection two i would say getting the right mindset to to, to uh, and get your numbers right and that kind of thing and, and i mean strategically plan your days how many people you're going to make contact with how you're going to attract the new clients are you going to have sales funnels are you going to do cold outreach what what process are you going to have in place have you got budgets that kind of thing so that would be another kind of avenue we'd have to look at and then third would be would be asking for the money people don't like to ask for money but you're not asking for money you're asking for them to invest in themselves or in their future that's the best way of work you, with sales. It's about words. You don't say, "Are you going to pay for this?" You're going to say, you say, "Are you going to invest in this?" You don't say, are "You sign this contract." You're going to say, "Would you like to see the agreement?" So you don't. It's just how you word things. It, 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 words are magic. Aren't, that, that, words are magic. That's why we call it spelling, isn't it? So you have to word things correctly and, and get your point across right and, and have the empathy. And just have it, everything needs to fit into place, and you will have the success in in selling. But words are magic. That's I like that. That's why we call it selling. That's really good. Um, leads. What have you found is because obviously if you don't have good good leads, mm. then it's a numbers game, right? The good leads, a certain amount of good leads translate if you're doing the right things from a sales standpoint into a certain amount of sales. <laughs> what is the best way that you found that you generate good quality leads and a good amount of them? that is a very tricky question because there's so many factors come into that is the product good are the, are the people you're selling for good is is the is the service right. going to be good because has it got the reputation are the leads expecting something or are they cold are they warm are they, there's so many factors go into that uh it, it's a tricky question that one to be honest but um <sighs> A lead is a lead. As long as they're qualified, it depends whether they're qualified. That, that's one of the, the key areas is the qualifications part. You can get as many leads through a funnel as, as, as you can, the, 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 the click or whatever, click bait or whatever you want to call it, or sales funnels and all that kind of thing. Right. Then you have to qualify them, don't they? So have they got X amount to invest in this program? Are they looking for this, 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 and this? So if you're trying to sell lawnmowers and and you, you, somebody comes through a funnel and he's looking for a uh, a garden shear instead then it's, it's like he's not qualified is he because it's not product so it's all about qualifying the leads first so once you know the leads are qualified that's when you know you've got good leads right and and so do you do you incorporate that qualification person process right away into your lead funnels or is that a post lead funnel, like what? What have you find has helped made them more qualified? Well, what what you tend to do is just there's a there's a number of different ways of doing this. So you could have a qualification like a, a an icebreaker call, a ten minute call, or you 
could uh, a form that they have to fill in with with like questions. They don't. They're not always one hundred percent honest. Right. <laughs> I mean, right. Of course. Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes they'll say I've got fifty k to invest when they haven't or whatever. So that's that's probably one of the best best things is to have some kind of uh, pre call or, or like qualifying call. So so if it, if it goes well, yeah. So blah 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 blah. Yeah. So it's be a good fit for this. Shall we book another call? So then you'd book a an actual sort of strategy call to complete the clause or to, to sort of make, get get them into the next stage. Or just like I said, just have them come for a funnel and then or they, they have to put an application in so they fill it in themselves and then that qualifies them, doesn't it? Or, or, or unqualifies them. Very, 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 very interesting. Um, Okay, so a book that that's not yours that you found has helped you tremendously in what you do. Oh, a book that you've that you... there was, mm, th there's there's that many that I've read um, okay. over the years. Uh, I can I can give you some authors because I've I must have read at least six or seven Brian Tracy ones. Here. So if you want okay. if you want a good old fashioned book sales book. At Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar's done some good ones as well. They are quite old. I mean, Zig Ziglar's passed away, rest in peace, and his books are relatively old, but they're still really good. The Closer series uh, is by Ben Gay. He's done a book, a, a set of three books called The Closer series, Closers one, two, and three. Those are the exceptional books. Uh, again, Tom Hopkins, I would read any of his stuff. Uh, I quite like Grant Cardone's. He, he has a different angle on it because he's not purely a salesman. He's, he's like a business tycoon nowadays, isn't he? But he's done some really good material because he, he, he's kind of an all-rounder now, I guess, isn't he? So those are some. You've got Jeb Blount's done some good stuff, um, like uh, what's, he, what's his called? Uh, prospecting, fanatical prospecting. So yeah, there's, there's so many good good sales guys out there. You can't beat Ogmandino as well with the greatest salesman in the world. That's a fantastic book. It's only a smallish one, but that's got some really good key qualities that a salesperson needs. That's pretty cool. And how about um, I don't know people, uh, uh, someone you listen to like online or 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 um, you know, like I watch a, a, a million things on YouTube uh, every Ooh. every single day, like. Who were a couple of people that you read? I mean, you reeled off a couple of them. Is there anything in particular that's kind of modern that you like as well that you might go to? Um, interesting. <laughs> uh, I, st I still quite like uh, Les Brown. He, he still puts out some good stuff. I, I listen Les to some Brown's of his, great. Some of his stuff. Um, yeah. There's some good ones that I've just discovered, actually, that not, not necessarily sales-related, but there's a guy called Rob Moore, and he he's quite big in the U.K., He's like a self-made millionaire. He's authored like a, a number of different books. He's like a property tycoon and everything. So he's got his own podcast, and I've, I've actually got his book at the moment called Money. Uh, it's a it's a fantastic book. So I'm, I'm, I need to get, keep going through that at the moment. It's quite a, quite a big book, but uh, he's he, he's just a wizard when it comes to money and how to invest it and and all all that kind of stuff. So yeah, <laughs> he's brilliant. No, that's that's really cool. That, see, that's great stuff. So. Um... You know, in, in close, how could how could people reach out to you? What's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Um, you know, if they're interested, where, where could they find you? Yeah, well, th there's a couple of ways. I mean, my I'm looking to. Oh, I'm putting a lot of my content now is on Instagram. So that my Instagram is Samurai JM80. So Samurai JM is all in lowercase and then eight zero. Uh, I'm putting a lot of like mixtures of my podcast episodes not just clips in the podcast but i'm also doing martial arts so i'm actually doing like qigong techniques and stuff like that and breathing like that kind of stuff but i'm also putting out sales content as well so it's just a mixture of those kind of things but i'm purely concentrating on that for content at the moment but obviously you've got my cold calling and closing mastery podcast check that out i'm actually going to do an episode of with a few chapters of my book a little bit like an audio book i'm not 
I'm not at the, the, the stage where I've, I'm doing the audio book yet. I mean, it's only recently come out on Amazon and Kindle, so I'm going to leave it a while, and then eventually I want to do it on Audible as well. But it's you have to have studios and everything apparently to do, make it sound proper. The Audible are very kind of picky at what they what they put on on there, so it has to be kind of perfect. You can't have any sound uh, issues or anything like that. So uh, yeah, so no, it's, Instagram is Samurai JM80. So you missed the JM. JM80. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, or you can just find me on Facebook. It's just John Molyneux. Uh, I'm also on LinkedIn as well. I've got a decent following on LinkedIn. I don't put as much content there anymore, but feel free to connect with me and message me on there if you like. Very cool. And um, let me just make sure I have it right here. JM, Samurai JM80. That's it for Instagram. Yeah, you got it. Perfect. And the Cold Calling Mastery podcast. Uh, I, it's, no, it's I'm cold sure. calling, cold calling, and closing mastery is the podcast. <laughs> cold calling, what? Cold calling and closing mastery. Oh, and closing. Can't yeah, forget yeah. that. There we two go. Schools, two schools. Cold there calling and close, and, and everything, everything in between. Uh, absolutely <laughs> per you. perfect. Um, yeah, definitely go and, and, and spend some time looking at your content. I'm going to look at your, your Instagram as well. There it is, the Sales Samurai Master. Um, first of all, and, and, and before I let you go, tell me the tie-in between um, you know the, the martial arts and sales and how important that has been for you uh, uh, in, in obviously developing what you do. I'm glad you asked that because I didn't think you were going to touch on that. For me, it is, it's like that because I was doing them at the same time. And the longer I do both for, the more I realize how they kind of connect together. And I've noticed there's a lot, a lot of successful business people that have got a, a martial arts background as well. And it's purely because you say, for example, like we're all stood in the dojo and we're all still in line. We're just punching over. We're all doing stomach level punches over and over again, just repeating it because that, that's what you do. Or you stand in, it, in a position and hold it for ages. So you've got to have patience and, and determination and, and grit. Same with, with the phones. If I've got to, if, if I get p pissed off after two or three calls and I want to, I want to call it a day, that's a quitter, isn't it? But if, if you're a black belt, you don't quit. So you just keep making them phone calls, don't you? Don't, don't, forget, don't get me wrong. You still need to have your resets in between. But I don't give up and, and, and forget it for the day. I just keep going. Does that make sense? So uh, the same with rep repetition. So you keep punching. You keep yeah. kicking over and over again. You keep um, dialing the numbers. You keep knocking the doors. You keep reading the scripts over and over again. So it's repetition. It's it's dedication, it's patience. All those things cross over from from one side to the other. Well, that's uh, that's the thing that I found, and you know, and obviously, you probably looking at my thing. I'm a football guy. Um, the ability to get those repetitions and related to everything you do, marrying that, like I, I think that's one of the things that's so great about about sports, about martial arts. Um, mm -hmm. You're marrying those repetitions to everything you do, learning that mindset that mm. repping it is repping it over and over again is is the is the true magic that's the pr that process yeah. is the true magic and it's it's uh, a lot of people are so consumed with the end of what happens when and and the whole key is you'll get to the when what happens when if you stick to that process mm. you rep it out and, and you stay like you said diligent and patient um, and determined mm. Uh, it, yeah. it, it, it totally transforms it because, um, and you know, I, I don't know if you're familiar. Have you, are you on clubhouse at all yet? Have yeah, I am actually on clubhouse yet. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll make sure I I'll follow you on. I, you know, I find what's interesting cause I've, I've mostly so far cause I just started going on there maybe, mm. uh, a week or two ago. And yeah. I find it so interesting. So many young people on there that are trying to figure this all out. Right. And yeah. The majority of them, over and over again, I hear people that are consumed with the end, right? Yeah, Instead yeah, of yeah. all the things that have to get done, mm. and um, in in order to get there, so you know, uh, uh, it's they want they want all the followers now, 
but haven't mm. done the diligence to build their brand and build and, and all that side, you know, you get you can't put the cart before the horse. Um, and I love that you talked about that. And and, and the the martial arts and and uh, is is such a disciplined disciplined um sport and system that that discipline is so critical in everything that you do and i i i feel like is that something that changed your outlook on how you approach yourself um you know the the martial arts did that change the way you thought about things because you talked earlier about it um how how you were going down kind of a not a great mm. path did, did martial mm. arts take that mindset and and give you that kind of thought process that hey, if I I stick with things, I can get to wherever I want to be in anything. Hundred percent, hundred percent. If it wasn't for the martial arts, that was kind of my my escape from from the monotony and the and the sort of daily grind of, of just things not happening for me. But it wasn't. I'm not going to kid anybody and say it was it was an easy transition. It, it was it was it was quite painful. It was brutal. Don't knock the doors every day. It was not something I wanted to do, but. You, when you've got an end goal, that's what helps you keep plugging away at something or keep going at things. The amount of times I see new closers, people that have never done sales before, young kids that have just, just done a course, they've spent a 2K on a course, and they're like on Facebook, because I'm in a lot of Facebook groups with closers and high-ticket closers, and they're like, why can't I find a 20% a commission job for a high-ticket like influencer or something? It's like, well, have you done any sales yet? No. Well, you need to find a sales job and just do normal selling first. Do you know, do, right. It happens time and time again. Right. Right. Start selling first. You're not gonna. That's like saying I want to be on on the court. Michael Jordan play basketball. Have you have you played played for a team before? No. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Then is it? Come on, give yourself a reality to check and do the groundwork first. Do that. You've got to be in the trenches, on the phones, learning sales, how to overcome things how to build rapport with people, how to help people, how to have empathy. It's all skills that you need to learn. You don't just get it. A absolutely. It, it's, um, see, I would say that, you know, the majority of us can be wildly successful as long as we don't try to, to emulate what the point zero zero one have been able to do. And as a football player, you know, if I emulated the guy who had, um, the most talent by far had the height and the size and all the speed. And I just did what he did. Well, if I don't have those qualities to start with, I'm going to be behind the eight ball. So mm -hmm. I've got to emulate the people. You, you've got to have the mindset to emulate the people that have made it there through hard work. And then, you know what, if yeah. you have talent, you got great talent. Well, that's only going to mm -hmm. continue. That's only going to put you to a different mm -hmm. level. But if you emulate the person mm. that got there through some shortcut or because they had an extreme talent, the 99.9% .9 of people won't get there and they'll they'll feel like, oh, I'm a failure because they emulated the wrong system. What do you think about that? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've heard it before where they say you, you can't beat hard work. I mean, even talent to some extent isn't going to get you there. Actually, hard work is what's going to get you. Just keep plugging away at something. I'll keep keep pushing, and, and I don't like to say grinding. That's because I don't. At the same time, I don't believe that you have to do what these entrepreneurs say: grind, 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 twenty four seven. I don't think you need to do that, but you have to be dedicated and determined and, and put the time in. Of course, you. But I would also say work on yourself. Make sure you're always working on yourself. That's why uh, if I think the more successful people, they work on themselves and they work for themselves. They don't work a nine to five for somebody else. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but but the more successful people have their own business or they, 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 they kind of, uh, yeah, they work for themselves basically, don't they? That, that's, the more, that's the more sort of profitable way to go, I'd say. Absolutely. And, and wor working for yourself, I, I think there's value if you work for somebody else in learning some things, or especially when Absolutely, you're young. Yeah. But but yeah. as you, when, once you start to, there, there's nothing like working for yourself and, and basically you live off what you eat. And, and, um, and, and you know what the truth is? You, you don't work a day when you're working for yourself. You know, like you are every day is a new challenge every day you're inquisitive and mm. trying to figure out mm. new things I'm talking to people like you you're talking to guys like me and 
you're you're learning little tidbits from from each person um, that that helps you in your day. Where if you do work for somebody else, and there are people obviously that that's you know that's best for them, but if if you work for somebody else, you know you get boxed in, and and mm -hmm. the, you could really grow. There, there's things to learn from working for somebody, but once you take that step and into entrepreneurship and, and figuring things out for yourself and have to actually engage with the customer um, and and that be your livelihood. The other person is your livelihood, meaning how well you help them is your livelihood. That that changes your perspective on, on a lot of things. And that self-determination, I think, goes, goes a long way. Well, any last thoughts? I really enjoyed the conversation. Any last thoughts? Yeah, well, all I would I would say is just if you have an idea or you want to do something with your life, even if you just have to keep working your nine to five, because I, I did it. I, I was doing things as, as an extra sort of side hustle, if you want to call it that way, or just something going sure. on in the background. And I still, I still do it now. I mean, I was still... I've got a sales role at the moment where I'm going to be selling windows and doors for a, for a, it's quite, well, it's a big national company, but in the background, I'm still building my own coaching business as well. So there's nothing wrong with working for somebody else, but on your own terms, because I'm self-employed. So I'm not going to do, an, I'm not going to do, I've, I've told them I'll say, I'll do these amount of hours because I've got this, 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 and this to do. And they're like, right. So, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm going to dedicate because they're like a lot of our workers they do 12 hour days, uh, six days a week. I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that. So this is my life. I'll do these amount of hours for you. I'm self-employed. That's it. You can kind of like it or lump it. So it's okay to work for somebody else on your terms. That's what I do. I don't mind working for myself on a weekend or a Saturday or a Sunday because it's for me. I, I always re I always resented working for somebody else on a weekend because it's it's lying in their pockets, isn't it? So you you got to remember it's your life. So if you're going to work for somebody else, try and do it self-employed where you do it on your terms. Very well said. Uh, I really enjoyed having you on the podcast. This is great. I, perfect person to kick it off with. Um, if if you don't have sales, you don't have a business. So. It, it, it's important to make sure that that you have that. And th thanks so much, John, for coming on. Uh, you guys can check him out. Uh, you can check him out at um, Samurai uh, JM80 on Instagram. He's got his book, The Sales Samurai. You can show that up there again for them. And, and uh, there it is. Amazon uh, window. Great. There you go. Get yourself a copy of that. Um, Cold calling and closing mastery podcast and iTunes and Spotify. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the Successful Life podcast, and it's been it's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed it myself. Thanks a lot. All right.